Hello people, now in this video we want to look at ptosis treatment. So, uh, till now we have seen all about ptosis, the, what ptosis is, abnormal drooping of upper eyelid and um, what are the causes, uh, congenital acquired and acquired, we saw neurogenic, myogenic, aponeurotic, mechanical. Then we saw how to do clinical evaluation, you have to take the history. Then you have to eliminate, uh, uh, you have to first find out if it is real ptosis or pseudotosis. If it is pseudotosis, exclude that. Then coming to ptosis, you have to check the muscles, the other muscles. Actual causes will be levator palpebrae superioris and um, muller muscle. But anyways, they are checking orbicularis oculi muscle. They are checking the eyelid creases present or not. Jaw winking phenomena they are checking. Then they are checking Bell's phenomena, this uh, out up and out rolling of eyeball due to forceful closure whether all this is present or not so and then what they are they doing they are measuring the degree of ptosis is it mild or moderate or severe then they are checking the margin reflex distance that is the distance between the lid margin and the corneal reflex they are measuring and um, normal value should be around four to five millimeter uh, if not if it is less then it will be some ptosis then clinical evaluation what they are doing they are asking the person to look down and then look up and they are checking how much the lid upper lid ex excursion is happening and normal should be around 15 millimeter if it is less 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 then it will be uh, graded so then the special investigation stencilon test to check whether it is because of myasthenia gravis then horner syndrome is it because of horner's they are checking and they are checking the nerves which are responsible etc then they will keep a record of the photos for comparison now we have reached the stage of treatment guys treatment basically you should remember uh, this table is kind of summarizing. You can see what and all other op options people have is uh, for uh, uh, congenital etc. This Fasanella Servat operation, then levator resection, levator resection, levator resection, then frontalis suspension. Okay, frontalis suspension. Now, when you say levator resection, why there are three? There is some anterior approach, conjunctival approach, and levator resection with aponeurotic reinsertion. So, here not just the muscle, they are talking about the aponeurosis also. Isn't it? Um, this one. Levator resection with aponeurotic reinsertion. They are, all this they are talking about. So, congenital where and all you see here. Congenital uh, corners can be congenital too. So, if there is congenital, congenital, they seem to be preferring all this. For acquired ptosis, they are talking about aponeurotic. Because aponeurosis is affected mostly in uh, acquired only, right? All that, okay. So, for that gun ptosis, Marcus gun uh, jaw winking phenomena, I think they are talking about frontalis suspension. Let's get started people. So, overview you have seen of the treatment in this. So, we will be looking for congenital water and all is there. Mullerectomy, tarso conjunctival mullerectomy, fasanella servat operation is there for conjunctival. Then they are talking about levator resection. So, you can either do uh, levator resection from... Uh, conjunctivals approach or from skin approach to approaches they have given all these are what it is still in the congenital ptosis frontalis sling operation also they are talking about for uh, congenital only fascia lata etc then they are talking finally about acquired for acquired they are treating the underlying cause guys cause that is coming in uh, acquired some of these operation techniques are repeating here again uh, fasanella servat etc etc okay <clears throat> so let's get started with the details of treatment for ptosis congenital treatment uh, treatment for congenital ptosis what is it here guys so this uh, congenital ptosis what they are telling is if it is severe you have to surgically fix earliest why because this person if they cannot see in one eye the child then it will not develop the uh, that part of the uh, brain right something like that it will not learn to use that part, that eye so that will become amblyopia so, if it is severe, then earliest uh, surgical correction should be done if it is severe ptosis. But if it is mild or moderate ptosis, the surgery should be delayed until the age of 34 years. Till 34 years, they have to live with congenital mild or moderate ptosis, is it? Only then they will get accurate measurements, it seems. Wow. So, congenital ptosis, only if it is severe, they will treat it surgically. Uh, surgical is the only option they are saying for congenital. And if it is mild or moderate, please wait till 34. They are saying till they can get the appropriate measurements. What are the options here they are talking about? Tarso conjunctivo mullerectomy. So, muller muscle. See, usually there are two muscles that are going to uh, help in the elevation, right? So, you have levator palpebrae superioris and the muller, right? So, uh, so they are here talking about mullerectomy. 
tarso conjunctivo mullerectomy fessenella cervat operation it is performed in cases having mild ptosis okay mild ptosis means it will be usually because of muller only so mullerectomy they are talking about so there is good levator function that means levator palpebrae superioris is fine Le good levator function is there okay and uh, what they will do is they will avert the upper lid so they are going back side that is conjunctival side that is which conjunctiva guys palpebral conjunctiva right and the upper tarsal border so um, what are they doing here so they are um, it in this the upper lid is averted and the upper tarsal border along with its attached muller muscle and conjunctiva are resected so they are doing some mullerectomy that's it you should remember that then let us move on to the next surgery for congenital ptosis levator resection so that was muller muscle now they are talking about levator muscle what will they do for levator muscle that is uh, levator muscle there are two approaches conjunctival approach and skin approach very easy to understand right this seems to be a conjunctival approach right because they are going from inside you can see they have averted the eyelid from inside they are going and doing something to the levator palpebrae superioris so do we have an image for skin this is also conjunctival approach okay for skin approach do they have a image yes this is skin approach so they have cut above uh, the skin right on the skin they have cut and they reach the levator um, uh, palpebrae superioris muscle and they seem to be cutting it off resection so let's look at this so for mild they were only talking about muller but if it is moderate or severe they want to touch the levator levator palpebrae superioris okay and um, if it is if patients are having uh, severe ptosis with poor elevator function poor levator function then they don't want to do it this operation okay so here they have there are some measurements based on which they should decide okay rough estimate or uh, in the grades of ptosis let's move on we are not going into that much detail what only we know is conjunctival side you will go or skin side so conjunctival side is also called as this uh, blaskovic's operation okay it is comparatively easy they are saying but not suitable for large amount of resection if large amount of uh, muscle you want to remove then this is not the technique conjunctival not preferred okay they are using some desmars lid retractor okay in conjunctival approach they are using desmars lid retractor so this is the desmares retractor desmare you should remember the spelling right desmares retractor this one they seem to be using it here what do you see are they using it up okay here they are double averting the upper lid okay then you have the skin approach that is called as ever bukes operation so this is more frequently approached so you can uh, resect more of muscle looks like right they said because in conjunctival large amount of resection is not possible so in the skin side they are going they did not talk about any retractor in this but here they have specifically talked about this desmares retractor do you think that retractor is here or here where do you think up or down okay so we are done with two uh, things guys for congenital we saw what and all muller muscle uh, mullerectomy because if it is mild ptosis then if it is moderate or severe they want to go for levator resection right that word was uh, levator resection right yes levator resection so now we will move on to the third type of treatment for congenital ptosis that is frontalis sling operation or bro suspension so something eyebrow here frontalis muscle here and they are suspending what the upper eyelid so in patients having severe ptosis with no levator function that means levator is not at all functioning at least in the other one uh, the levator was functioning so they were doing some levator resection here there is no levator function they have severe ptosis so they want to do this bro uh, suspension or frontalis sling suspension so the lid is anchored to the frontalis muscle okay use your frontalis muscle and raise your upper eyelid okay then what is this fascia lata best material or some non absorbable material may be used as a sling so what will you use as a sling the sling will be fascia lata from where did they get this fascia lata or any thing else also they can use like supramide suture or silicon rod they can use but facial lata where will you get facial lata we'll have in our thigh right deep fascia of the thigh it says so did, do you think they took it from the thigh and then they used it as a sling what do you think facial lata lid suspension what is this frontalis suspension same thing they have explained 
last in the treatment guys now we will look at the treatment for acquired ptosis congenital what did we see congenital we saw mullerectomy then levator resection right resection is the word then lastly we saw frontalis sling or something levator resection only right i keep forgetting what is that yeah resection because there are two words that come here in uh, squint you have seen that muscle can be recessed or resected so uh, in this what we are trying is resection levator resection so you are removing a part of the muscle and you are uh, inserting it back where it was original uh, insertion only but you are just removing a part of the muscle you are making it a little shorter so that will make the muscle strong so resection is what they are doing okay so that is very important word then lastly now we are here guys treatment of acquired ptosis that completes the treatment let's look at this one now acquired means you should have taken proper history to know why it happened so you treat the cause then uh, uh, conservative treatment should be carried out uh, for at least 6 months okay even in neurogenic ptosis right you defer the surgery at least for 6 months in neurogenic ptosis surgical procedures uh, will be similar to the congenital ptosis the amount of levator resection required is always less than the congenital ptosis so the amount of resection uh, of levator will be less in acquired okay in congenital they will have uh, you have to remove more of the muscle looks like okay most cases the simple facinella servat procedure is adequate in most of these acquired uh, they are saying mullerectomy that's what you saw right that is more than enough they are saying so look like acquired ptosis they are not worried much congenital only they are scared that it could be amblyopia and all that if it is severe so you should give surgical treatment as soon as possible if it is severe but if it is mild or moderate wait till 34 years that becomes little strange right so we are done with the treatment of ptosis in this video guys uh, so can you revise uh, facinella servat operation levator resection anterior approach levator resection conjunctival approach res levator resection with aponeurotic reinsertion this we didn't see this will be for the acquired uh, ptosis then frontalis suspension using the fascia lata or that silicon uh, rod did they say silicon rod somewhere felt like we saw a silicon rod for the suspension yeah supramide sutures supramide suture or silicon rod as a sling they are using okay so this completes uh, the treatment for ptosis guys so uh, hope you have understood the treatment for ptosis just look at this levator action should be there for everything if levator action is not there then only they are doing this <clears throat> frontalis suspension okay amount of ptosis that can be treated is facinella is mullerectomy so little ptosis only you can correct but if you have greater than that ptosis you can use anything else especially frontalis suspension even if it is severe you can do it okay that's all guys bye bye